So can I just first uh, ask you, uh, Philip, um, yeah. can you just tell us a little bit about your, um, about Monkey Jeans, about how you began, when you began, and a little bit about yourself first before you, we go into um, the actual details of the production? Um, well, basically, Monkey Jean, I, prior to that, had made in the UK. So we had factories that we used, um, one that we had a great relationship with in Leicester. And I was doing another label called Rogue, um, which sort of was late 90s. We had, like, a fantastic time. Um, it was when the independents were at their height, and then the game changed. Um, you know, the game became more corporate. Uh, independents started to fade out of the scene. So we had to change. And so I came through with um, a new concept, which was Monkey Jean. Well, I made the decision that we would we, we had to go abroad for production. And we insisted that the partners that we found who were going to do our production were got certain. So it was, you know, from the word go with Monkey, it was a, an ethical label. And we we, we didn't get the God certification. We got the UK one, Soil Association. And so we sat in there, sat um, in a meeting, sort of. And the one thing about Soil Association was 99.5% of the population, especially our customers, wouldn't know what the hell Soil Association was. Mm. And so that's when the mantra idea came, you know, just it, it basically was what was, you know, what the mantra says, you know, no blood, no sweat, no tears, no slave labor, no child labor. We don't support any of those things. Mm -hmm. um, but first and foremost, Monkey Jeans was, had an edge. You know, everybody, the skinny revolution had just begun. And we offered um, these sort of vibrant pop art colors. So we had like electric blues, chili red, uh, greens that you could see, you know, from 200 yards. And it worked. You know, we so we, we we had excitement, the range was exciting, mm -hmm. and it was very obvious when you picked up a pair of our jeans that there was something else going on. So it, it you know, but first and foremost, you know, you were picking up a pair of jeans because, you know, they were, they were attracting you as mm -hmm. a punter. Mm -hmm. So that's what, I mean, it, it, we suddenly went on the world stage for it, you know. We, the Italians would, I just went mental for it. Mm. And then we, you know, we hit other European countries. UK was, funnily enough, quite late in kicking in. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, it was fabulous, uh, mm -hmm. the way it worked. And we, we had, the thing, sort of, if I've got, you know, a forte, it's picking fabrics. Right. Mm -hmm. And the factory I worked with in Indonesia, I could design my own fabric. So Monkey Jeans, we had our own fabrics. Right. Uh, so it, it wasn't, you know, as things got bigger with all this corporate, clothing just became fodder. You know, unless you went really high up the scale on price, everybody had the same gene. So a factory that was making, you know, for, I don't know, Primark could be making one of the labels. Mm. You know, it was bizarre. It was just, it, it really was. There was no, the individual. You know, not only did independence go, but individuality sort of went with it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have a low boredom threshold. I just can't handle it when it's just all looks the same sort of kit, you know? Mm. So are you a designer by, by background? Yeah, but I'm, I'm quite a raw designer. I'm, you know, I, I was very lucky. I had a guy uh, through the years when I was, you know, becoming a gene label who was a brilliant pattern cutter. So um, if you like, you know, if you had an idea for a tune in your head and you were humming away, this guy was the piano player who put down all the notes. Uh -huh. um, so he, we used to hook up and I'd give him, you know, the general idea of where I wanted to go and he devolved the pattern. So I ended up with like absolutely bespoke patterns uh, and that's how it became, you know, successful. Yeah. So he he was with me all the way through. So my you know um, back catalogue of patterns is is nuts. It's every every single shape that sort of comes around. You know, shapes evolve, and we tweak things. So right now we've got some of the wider shapes we were doing in the nineties. We've reintroduced a monkey, but we have put you know another edge to them. Mm -hmm. But the block. Are still the original blocks because they fit the fits were fantastic 
Yeah, so basically you've got your own fabrics and you've got great designs and that's really bringing customers on board. Um, so what, who is your actual customer profile? Do you know who's buying your jeans? We, we do have two bites um, out there. We, we, we've got the ethical side. Um, so the ethical punter tends to be, you know, the one who, you know, they haven't given up on how they look. Uh, they still go out, they still parties, they still go out to, you know, at places, uh, regardless of their age. Mm -hmm. And they like something that's got a bit of an edge. Mm -hmm. So we have that punter and we've got it, you know, since we relaunched, you know, we're up to about, I don't know, 35, 36,000 people on Facebook mm -hmm. um, from, you know, zero 18 months ago. And, it, and that, and that is predominantly, you know, we've got America, loads of Europe. It's, it's on the ethical side, it's quite fabulous. Mm. Uh, and what, what age would you say that is on the ethical side? What age groups? Probably 30, 40, something like that. Yeah. Um, the other side, mm. on the other side, which were just, which is where monkey jeans came in originally, you know, when we were doing all the exciting colours. Uh, we're starting to get that that group back so the 15 16 to 25 you know where they're where you know that they want to wear something that's different uh, we're pulling that and that that's the adrenaline rush that's the push so your jeans are pretty much affordable for the younger teen uh, sort of age groups as well well it's a, it's a bit weird that you know if you actually talk to that group it's where their spend is now so for you to collect 65 70 quid for a pair of jeans you have to you really have to have something that's got something more about it than if it's just a skinny jean a black skinny jean they ain't gonna spend 65 70 quid that's it full yeah. stop yeah because uh, uh, they'll just go to wherever and they'll buy them if it's got something where it's got some a story about it, it's got a different look. Yeah, they will. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, I mean, my daughter's sixteen. You know, she she works at the weekend. Yeah, you know, pot washing and waiting on. And you know, every weekend she's got seventy, eighty quid in her pocket. You know, all kids can earn that sort of bread. If if you ask the kids, sort of like. You know, you go to an inner city school where they're spending their money. They'll brag about how much money they spent on, a, you know, whatever the new trainer is. Right. Then uh, their phones will be 25 quid a, a month, 30 quid a month, and they'll want the new phone. <coughs> pair of jeans, 20 quid. Um, so you, to get them to react on something on jeans, we really had to go and, you know, create something that, would grab their attention that wasn't ready available on the high street and that's what we've done yeah so you don't sell on the high street are you just online uh we're online we are i mean since the relaunch we've we've opened up with a few of the high street online businesses um we've got people like urban outfitters and top man look like they're going to be on for spring Mm -hmm. uh, we we've already got Zalando, we've got Iconic, you know these big online corporate companies. But again, to get noticed on them, they're they're massive. You know, if you go on Zalando and you put women's jeans on, you you can through sixty pages. 